What's happening folks, Sean the Average Angler, and today we have the video for you on the fall, the fall, fall transition. So essentially when we get that first really cold night that kind of really changes things. So right now the fish will be up chasing bait, typically shallower in most lakes not saying there won't be none deep and not saying there won't be none shallow after this takes place we're talking about the bigger population okay so when this happens i'm still going to stick with the pattern that i was on well i shouldn't say stick with it i'm going to give it a go okay now remember those are the three previous videos minus the shopping one so we got our square bill our chatterbait and our lipless crankbait, okay? Rattle trap, LV500, jackal, striking, whatever your choice is, okay? I showed you the ones I like. All right, so we get that first cold night. There's ice on the dock, ice on the boat, whatever it may be when you get up in the morning, okay? Now, once the sun gets up, this is probably gone. We're talking about overnight. It hit that real cold temperature. You get out on the water. You've been on the chatterbait and LV bite, and all of a sudden, nothing. You're not seeing them up shallow, so what happened? This is typically, and I've seen this happen overnight. That's why I'm saying overnight. Those fish turn around and book it for deeper water, okay? Most of the time, that's not very far. Most of the time where they're corralling these bait fish is not too far from the depths. Now the depths can be, depending on the lake you're on, deep could be 12 feet, could be 20, could be 30. Depends on the part of the lake you're in also. For instance, Clear Lake here, we have some shallow parts of the lake. We have some deeper parts of the lake. So in some areas it might be eight feet. In other areas I've seen it as deep as 35 feet, okay? They've gone from the bank to 35 feet overnight. And if you give it two days, they're really down there. All right, so what do we do to catch those fish? Now, my number one and most effective bait has always been a jig. And I'm not a dirty jig sponsored guy or anything, okay? This is what I have in the house. Jig boxes are in the boat. And I'm going to look at this two ways, okay? Fall fishing, because we didn't talk about jigs, I'm just going to tell you this for flipping because that's something else you could be doing is flipping, pitching into the, into brush, tulies, that kind of stuff. Well, these things don't come out of here very easy. All right, so this is a Dirty Jigs compact jig, all right? And I'm going to trim this down some when I use it. I don't want it back quite that far. I want it to go past the hook, but you'll see it's a short hook shank, okay? And then I'm gonna take a three inch trailer and put it on there. I'm not saying small trailer, it could be big flappers. Jig trailer of your choice. And we're gonna go with craw patterns, okay? Craw, bluegill, this could be considered either one. I think this is a matte brown or something, super matte brown. No, dirty 420, okay, so that's a 420. There's the super matte brown, brown, purple, whatever you like, okay? Now, one thing, this is the flipping jig. There's no reason you couldn't cast this offshore if you wanted to, but trying to find the right ones. Typically, I'm gonna use the football jig and half to three quarter ounce. Again, I'm gonna trim it up maybe a half inch behind the hook, okay? Try and keep it compact. Remember, fall bait tends to be smaller. We got all the new crawdads, everything else, although they spawn all the time. Baits could be smaller, okay? It's just my experience, they're a little more finicky when this change first happens, so we wanna keep our baits compact. Most of the time, we're also gonna move them slow. Now. What am I going to throw that on? Not that one. Oh, okay. We're talking flipping. Yep. That's the iRod 775 Air. Flipping and pitching rod, okay? 
Super nice rod. I'm not into the eight footers anymore. I still have some eight footers, but for every day, this is much easier on my wrist, in my hand. Very, very accurate, plenty of power. And the iRod Air is their top of the line. I got that paired with a Shimano Bantam 7.1 to 1. So it kind of covers the broad spectrum. Now, if I needed to, I could also use that rod offshore. But I don't need to because I have another one that I prefer for that. That's the iRod Air 754C. Okay. So not quite as stiff as the other one, plenty of backbone. I'm throwing it on 16 to 18 pound fluorocarbon. And like I said, I'm either gonna go with a half to three quarter ounce football head on one, one of those rods and then the other one, I want a swing head. The swing head has done so good for me this time of year. And look, you can throw all kinds of things on a swing head, man. Uh, a few years ago, we were on a spot early October. These conditions happened uh, a couple days before, and we were fishing a swing head. And we got on a spot, and we just kept changing baits. By the end of the day, I had five rods rigged up with swing heads with five different baits. Some of it was just color changes. Others was profile changes. We threw brush hogs. We threw Rage Bugs, we threw Z Cross, uh, we threw the Bandito Bug, and I think we even threw a uh, Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver. That was a swimming deal, okay? It wasn't on rock, it was more on, well, there was some rock, but it was more like sand, so more like northern type lakes where you have a lot of sand, some rock mixed in. Uh, and they just kept replenishing. I mean, we seriously sat there for six hours and, and we had to go way in and they were still by my cold brew. I just recently got introduced to cold brew. I love it. All right. We need something a little finessier. I'm still going to fish this on a casting rod. I rod 703 Gen 3. Okay. And that is going to be a quarter ounce shaky head. Now this, I'm pretty particular about, okay? This hook is stout. That's why you see me throwing it on the casting rod. I want that for a couple of reasons. One, because the amount of line out, I need to be able to take up the slack and hit them hard because a lot of times these are big fish. My preferred bait is that Z-Man Fatty Z, okay? This is the regular size one, just called the Fatty Z. It's not the Ned one and it's not the Mag. On that quarter ounce, that's a four-aught hook. These things are phenomenal. I'll list them in the description, okay? You can also fish it on a spinning rod. I prefer to fish it on a casting rod where I can get away with it. I'm on clear water, smaller fish, then I'm gonna go to a spinning rod. Okay. That's about all I do for slower baits. The jig, the swim jig, and that fatty Z on a shaky head. You can go two ways with this. You can throw it on a beast hook type hook. Okay, screw in. But that's the Crush City Mayor. And this goes for any kind of four and a half, five inch swim bait is kind of what I'm looking for here. I will use the six inch trash fish, uh, Largo Shad, the freaking Crush City, the Kai Tech, whatever you want. We're gonna put it down there. We want it bouncing on bottom, okay? You can use an underspin with an open hook. You can use the weedless, it's your preference. The other thing that I may do is throw this three wire A rig. Okay, this is a Picasso, I believe. No, it's the Yum. The Yum. I'll link it in the description. No blades. Okay, it's a simple three wire. I like it on the bottom because this is just easier for me to get through everything. It doesn't hang up as much. Again, I want it touching bottom, hitting bottom, or at least making contact with some of those rocks on the bottom. 
Now, with that in mind, the other thing that really starts to come into play this time of year, and we'll do a special video on it, but I got to mention it here because it is a way to attack these fish, and that's with deep diving crankbaits. It's probably, I was going to say the last technique I would go to here, but that's not true. I'm going to see how the fish are positioned when I find them. And if I can use a deep diving crankbait and they're aggressive on it, then I'm going to throw it. However, the first things that I want to throw is the jig and the swim bait. Purely because I'm going to get more fish to the boat percentage-wise with a single hook application. Okay? And honestly, most of the time when I'm fishing down deeper and there's no grass around, I'm going to fish an open hook underspin with this bait. The crankbait, you're going to select by depth you're fishing in. I generally will go some with something that, uh, say I'm fishing 14, 16 feet. I'm probably going to be looking for a 20 plus foot diver because I really want to get down there quick and I want to be banging around on that stuff and causing commotion to trigger a reaction. Remember, we're trying to trigger a reaction. And with that in mind, I'll give you a couple of other things that you can do to all of these other baits that we talked about with the crankbait, the chatterbait, and the rattle trap. And that's we can impart some action to it that's not necessarily the norm. Norm meaning what we're doing the majority of the cast, okay? With the jig, you can pop it up every 30 seconds or so, okay? Pop that baby up a couple feet off the bottom and then follow it back down. Sometimes that will trigger a strike. With the swing head, you can change the speed at which you're... I generally reel them pretty slow. You can do a couple cranks fast and then kill it. The change of speed often triggers bites. Now with the crankbait, that's what we're doing anyway. If we're deflecting off of things, we're imparting that erratic action that way. All right, look folks, <laughs> these videos get me excited, all right? So my voice tone goes up and down sometimes because it gets me fired up. I wanna get out on the water and go fishing and in a week and a half, a little more than a week and a half, I will be on Clear Lake chasing these big girls and the big boys. I'm not shy, I'll take either, okay? It's why I recently got a bunch of this stuff you saw in the shopping video if you watched it go check it out because there is a big special going on over at tackle warehouse okay in that video i tell you how to do it there's even a link there if you don't want to watch the video go look in the description click on that link and it'll take you there the more you buy the more you get off discount off all right sean the average angler look this is a great time of year so fun to catch catch them this time of year the recreational boats are starting to disappear but it can be tough if you're not looking in the right places and doing the right thing so i'm trying to help everybody out including myself because this reminds me of a lot of the things i learned when i'm get prepping to do a video all right sean the average angler thanks for watching if you like the content like subscribe and we'll see you on the next one